finally get on my bike today and it starts to rain. Just my luck. I wonder if I should put rain X on the on the camera lens. <laughs> I wonder if that would work. I put rain X on all my shields, face shields, and it is fantastic. I also put it on my my truck, but you know, that kind of goes without saying. Alright, so today's topic um, is one that a lot of vloggers have covered. It's almost like a requirement topic, I feel. Kind of like doing a walk around to your bike. It's just the obligatory biker topic of why I started to ride, or why I ride, or how I got into riding, or whatever. That story. A co-worker and acquaintance of mine. I mean, we were decent friends for being co-worker friends, but we weren't like the hangout after work types. Well, we got a message at work one day that he was really sick. He was in the hospital. He had actually woken up paralyzed. And literally, I, I mean that, he just woke up one day and was paralyzed. Come to find out, he had had four infections move into his spinal column and eat away the myelin sheath and destroy his immune system. And it rendered him paralyzed from about the nipples down. This came as a shock to me because like a month after he was put in the hospital I mean he was in the hospital for like eight months and about a month into it he had his 35th birthday I think the reason I related so much to him is that he and I were both the type that were working multiple jobs and it was like he was commuting an hour and a half or so to go to school doing that during the day or no doing that I guess some nights is when he must have been doing that I don't even know And then he was working with me during the day. And then he was waiting tables on like the weekend nights, the busy nights. I, at the same time, was working with him during the day. Had a retail job at night. And had a second retail job on the weekends. All day. Um, you know, so consequently, he and I, during breaks and whatnot, would lay down and take naps. I mean, these are 15 minute breaks, and we would both just be like, and we're sleeping for 10 minutes, because that sounds better than doing anything else. We both survived on tons of caffeine. I don't know how many hours he ended up working slash being in school, but I know I was over 80 for a while there. And it just wears you out, it wears you down. And you don't really have time to get like health things checked out when you're doing that. So anyway, he went into, he went into work one night bartending and was really out of it, really dizzy. He uh, ended up leaving work because they told him to, not because he wanted to. When he got home, he was trying to take care of his dogs. The man had eight dogs that he was taking care of. A lot of rescue cases, you know, just taking in whoever needed a home. And so he had eight dogs living with him. Uh, the oldest was Marley. Marley was his original and his most loved. And, and she had hip dysplasia. 
and he was helping her out the stairs and he fell over about halfway up the stairs because he just had a dizzy spell, the same kind of dizzy spells he had been having at work. And he fell over and fell backwards and fell down the stairs. And so logically, I know you're thinking, oh, well, that causes paralysis. Well, no. He got up and stumbled to his couch and just decided he was going to sleep there for the night. And when he woke up in the morning, he couldn't move. Like, he couldn't get up, he couldn't walk, he couldn't feel his legs. And he called his best friend. He told me this later on in the hospital. He called his best friend and he's like, yeah, can you come over and let the dogs out? My legs won't work. <laughs> it was like his first concern was for his dogs. Now, learning to ride a motorcycle had always been kind of on my bucket list. But it wasn't, it was something that scared me a little bit, you know. The thought of being paralyzed scares me a little more than the thought of being dead. And I know that there are guys missing limbs, riding track days, and everything. They are braver than I am, <laughs> straight up. So anyway, my friend Brian, uh... Well, his friend came over, and she was actually the one that ended up calling the ambulance. You know, because he didn't think it was serious or something. <laughs> so she ended up coming over and being like, no, we're going to the hospital. And that's where he lived for the next eight months. And then he moved back in with his parents. And to this day, he's still paralyzed. And that was several years ago now. But I think what really spurred me to go ahead and fulfill my bucket list of learning to ride a motorcycle, despite the perils of possibly becoming paralyzed, is not the fact that I saw him living and enjoying life as a paraplegic. It's much more the fact that he was just going so hard, and I could definitely relate to that, and he just woke up paralyzed because he got sick and didn't even know he was sick you know he did he knew he was like a little bit sick but he didn't know he was that sick so that scares me more the fact that what if I'm laying there in a hospital bed and I'm paralyzed and there's no reason you know it's just an illness that I didn't see coming I guess now I just kind of look at it as, well, if there's a possibility that I might end up like that anyway, why not live life to the fullest now? And so that's why I got, got, well, that's why I went and took the class. And honestly, even I was taking the class and I was just like, oh yeah, yeah, I might get a bike, I don't know, thinking sometime in the future when I had money. And it was like the day after I finished my MSF class, I walked out and I looked at my truck and I was like, man, I wish I had something fun to drive, like a bike. <laughs> and I think I started shopping that day. Bought the first bike that I could afford, which thankfully had been well taken care of because <laughs> I didn't know anything about buying bikes. And so that's the basic story of why I got into riding. Well, I'm gonna go get out of this rain, so until next time, guys, ride safe. And thanks for watching.